Another cool feature is the includes. Uh, the includes are very, very useful uh, because those allow us not to have to make a lot of requests. Uh, <clears throat> so while the fields that we showed before uh, solve the issue of getting too much data back, the includes solve the issue of uh, having to make too many requests. So how you do this is you do just include and then you put the name of the relationship. So you could do UUID to get the, the user. Include UUID and more importantly, you can even nest this, right? So let's first include the UUID to see what's in there. So in the response, uh, there is an included section with the data about the user. And we can see that there is another relationship um, in here. Oh, but the relationship is not populated. So this is not going to be very interesting. Let me change this to Article 3. Because I know that that one has some data. Uh, yeah, so there is a relationship called field preference. So we can keep including by saying UUID, sorry, UID dot the name of the relationship. And we could go down and down and down. And in this case, I'm going to include the, the author and the taxonomy term that uh, I added to that user entity, which is of type category. So if I send that request and I go to include it, I see that there is the user and there is the category. And of course, you can uh, combine the two things, the fields, the sparse field sets and the includes by doing fields on the user resource. It's going to be name and the field on the category resource is going to be also name. Let me check that. Um, yeah, the name and probably makes a lot of sense to have the name of the Oh, where is that? Yeah, the name of the category. So let me do that so we can see that attributes we only have to then we have included data with just one attribute and one attribute in the category. So that's how you do include and you avoid having to do multiple requests. Um, you can traverse relationships until the end of days. So yep, yeah, that's another feature.